The Garden of Eden, or the Garden of God, is mystical in more ways than one. In the Bible, the Garden of Eden is described as a paradise inhabited by the first created man and woman, Adam and Eve. When we think about this garden, we imagine a forest abundant with ripe fruits and beautiful flowers free from death and pain. This paradise is often used as a symbolic place that represents pure bliss. But then, the first man and woman lost access to this place after sinning, causing them to become banished from the garden forever. Imagining this paradise would surely make us believe there's no way for such a place to exist on Earth. But what if it did? Is the Garden of Eden just a mythical place or an actual place on Earth? Stick around to find out as we explore the shocking discoveries made about the Garden of Eden. If the Garden of Eden is a real place on Earth, is it possible to find it in the same state that it had been in before humankind was banished from it? Not at all. Since this perfect paradise presented to us in the Bible before sin happened had existed a long time ago, it left many changes in the world in the amount of time that passed. The Earth is no stranger when it comes to change. Hundreds of thousands of years ago, scientists concluded that continents were much larger and covered in lush vegetation. But after some time, change has been inflicted on our planet, causing continents to break apart and vast lands to be swallowed by bodies of water. So, how were the people able to locate the Garden of Eden despite the many changes that the Earth had gone through? Surprisingly, the Bible actually recorded the Garden of Eden as a real place located somewhere on the Earth. According to Genesis 2, the location of the garden is where the four rivers, Tigris, Euphrates, Pishon, and Gihon come close together. It was believed that a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and the four river heads parted from that river. The Genesis states that the single river went through the Garden of Eden and turned into the four rivers when it exited. To this day, the rivers Tigris, also called Hiddekel, and the Euphrates continues to flow through ancient Mesopotamia and straight through present Iraq. However, the Pishon and Gihon rivers were believed to have dried up after the last ice age. Scholars proclaim that all four rivers used to flow into the Persian Gulf, coming close together in the southeastern part of today's Persian Gulf. Soon after, a reoccurring problem would confuse the minds of researchers because the location of the Pishon and the Kihon River is actually unknown. In the 1500s, a widespread belief circled throughout scholars and researchers, pointing out that the Nile and Ganges River were the alleged Pishon and Gihon. A French theologist named John Calvin rejected this theory, explaining that the distance between these two rivers was simply too great, making it impossible for the habitation of one man in both the Nile and Ganges as it just wasn't possible with the distance. Calvin also states, there is greater probability in the opinion of those who believe that two of these rivers are pointed out, although their names are now obsolete. This implies that the names of these rivers may be lost to us and are now known by different names instead of Pishon and Gihon today. Although it's not entirely impossible for Calvin's theory to be true, the Earth has had its fair share of calamities that may have triggered floods so massive that they wiped away Pishon and Gihon. Biblical literalists came up with an explanation for the massive flood that may have swallowed the two lost rivers. They proposed that the flood of Noah may have been the flood that erased the Pishon and Gihon rivers before, but scientists remain skeptical about this as many flaws in the story of Noah's Ark can be easily pointed out today. In the Bible, the people of the earth had grown so wicked that God decided to wipe the slate clean and start anew. God spares Noah and his family finding that they are the only faithful people left on earth, and he gives Noah the task of making a massive ark that can hold him and his family, along with two of every land species, so that they can repopulate the earth once the flood had gone. Now, scientifically, flooding the entire earth so that even the tops of the tallest mountains would be submerged below seawater is impossible. And even if a flood did occur, all that water would have to go somewhere like becoming trapped in glaciers dozens of miles tall. Whatever the argument is about the flood of Noah, there simply isn't evidence about the global flood. However, the idea of floods rewriting the Earth's geography would not be entirely ignored by scientists, as they would find sediment deposits across Iraq, with one sediment deposit being 3.4 meters thick. These depths were dated to approximately 2900 BC, 
roughly 1,500 years before Genesis would be written. Climate change could also have been another reason why the two rivers vanished, as this could have possibly dried up the rivers. James Hofmeyer, an archaeologist, stated that a possible candidate for the now obsolete Pichon River was discovered with the aid of shuttle imaging radar technology. They conclude that the Pichon River flowed east from the mountainous Hejaz region of Saudi Arabia, where Dr. Farouk El Baz, a geologist, discovered traces of the river's course beneath the sand, with the ground penetrating radar images from the space shuttle. But what about the Gihon River? The author of Genesis described the Gihon River as encircling the land of Kush, going into the land of Ethiopia. But this would contradict the idea of Gihon issuing out from Eden due to the distance. This would be met with some argument, as there would be many speculations about where the Gihon would be. Some scholars would later identify Kush as the ancient Kassite kingdom or the land of Kassites, which would make a lot more sense since the land of Kassites is located in western Iran. With the Gihon River allegedly encircling the land of Kassites instead of Kush, it relates to Genesis 2, with which the Gihon River issued out from Eden while connected to the same river as the three other rivers. So, where was the alleged Garden of Eden? Scientists believe that the area beneath the Persian Gulf could have very much been the garden way before this area had been flooded. It was stated in Genesis 2 that the single river went through the Garden of Eden and turned into the four rivers when it exited, the single river being the head of the four. However, in ancient Hebrew, head did not mean the beginning of a river, but where it connected with other bodies of water, implying that the heads of the four rivers were all in the Persian Gulf. Modern research would support this theory when Jeffrey Rose, an archaeologist, referred to this area as the Gulf Oasis. Jeffrey Rose quotes, Given the exposed land within the Gulf Basin, the abundance of food, water, raw lithic material, and its conscripted geographic position, the sizable inland depression is thought to have formed one of the most important oases in the ancient world. His words correlate the alleged area with Eden in terms of how the Gulf Oasis had such a perfect environment where humans were able to thrive, serving as a paradise for anyone who lived there. Rose also mentions how the Gulf Oasis had very little rainfall, but this wouldn't threaten the area as it was watered by a rich mosaic of freshwater springs, making it a unique place. This relates the Gulf Oasis to the Garden of Eden once again in terms of the area's lack of need for rain. It is incredible how the Gulf Oasis matches the description with that of Eden, harboring countless evidence of where the garden may have once been. Unfortunately, the Gulf Oasis would ultimately become flooded due to the Earth's changes, eliminating the lush vegetation that once existed in the area. What is very interesting, though, is how Genesis can describe the Garden of Eden with such accuracy that we can correlate it with the now flooded oasis. To add, the original river which connected the four rivers would have also been deemed lost, as it eventually would have been devoured by the massive flood. What are your thoughts on the Gulf Oasis possibly being the Garden of Eden? Do you think the Garden may not have existed on Earth? Or we might have been looking for this paradise in the wrong places? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.